G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, I just was going to do a little bit of a clarification on the uh, mirage that we could see from Harry's place the other day when the uh, refraction went a little bit super. Well, uh, Harry had asked me to explain where the 75 feet that was missing had gone to. Well, I think it's suffice to say that looming is the thing that's um, responsible for it. Now, the other things I'd wanted to cover was, look, we know Harry's house hasn't moved up or down, so it's still sitting at 76 metres. We know that the ocean hasn't raised up or fallen down, and because we can still see the water at the base of the cliff, it would be flowing all over the place, should the water have changed level. We also know that there was a cold front swept in across the ocean on those days. We could see that from the Bureau of Meteorology data. We can also explain quite easily how the light bends, causing that refraction and that extraordinary looming. And I had a quick look at Walter Bislin's curve calculator, and we can see that if we just change a few things, like Harry's at 250 feet, 76 metres, if we just double that, go up to 500 feet or 150 metres, then we can see a full 30 miles with zero refraction, nothing hidden. So... I'm not sure why this is so confusing. Now, of course, if we, at 250 feet, if we use standard refraction, you can see there's only 45 feet hidden. And if we double that refraction, which is probably more in the, the, the area that it was on these couple of special days, there's only like 10 feet hidden. So it's pretty much nothing at that point. And I'll just do a quick little diagram here that uh, shows that at 250 feet, 75 feet of uh, boat should be hidden. But if you go up here to 500 feet, then none of the boat is basically hidden. And now if we've got this looming thing happening, well, what's happening is the light rays are just curving slightly. So if you were to straighten that ray out, it appears like it's coming from 500 feet. So... Basically at 200 feet, 250 feet, you are seeing what you would normally see at 500 feet. And that does actually make sense. And that also explains where the 75 feet missing is. It's not missing. That's what we're supposed to be seeing under those atmospheric conditions. And I'll add a few comments from uh, Bobby Shuster. He's a guy who plays with radar, I believe, and he's uh, quite cluey on this electromagnetic spectrum stuff. And I guess he understands how all of this works far better than most of us. And he says it's not um, superior mirage, but it's actually looming. So I'll take Bobby's word on that and uh, change my answer to looming for $500. And here is a question for all flat earthers should be asking. Why do we never see the moon or the sun rise earlier than expected, or set later than expected to that fact? Why, I mean, on a day when the atmosphere is super, super clear, and if the sun is coming in on a circle, surely we should be able to see it a little bit earlier, like a minute earlier. We never, ever see it earlier. So, why not? Is there anyone ever provided a photo? Now, I know you're going to say that things like there's a limit to how far you can see, but we know the moon when it appears, it's thousands of kilometres away. Even on a flat Earth model, it's thousands of kilometres away, and yet we can see that clearly as soon as it's above the horizon. So why do we not see that fade into visible into vision? And this one was just for Harry, and I know that you might be thinking that there's some sort of light limiting the distance that you can see. So here's a quick little test. I mean, if you're not going to think about the moon and think that it's somehow special, how about you grab your P900, put it on a tripod up against the window after dark. Try setting it to scene mode, hit menu and go to star trails. Now make sure you've got a good battery, put the camera at wide angle, point it just above the horizon and let it go. It'll take 150 minutes to generate a nice little star trail and then please show us what you see. Now in that little 10 second star trail you should see some planes leaving or arriving from Sydney. Now, how far out, how far down to the horizon do those little plane trails go? I mean, here in Brisbane, I can see them for like minutes and they leave Brisbane going south. So I'm just wondering, I mean, the nav lights are nothing special. They're just ordinary lights. So, and if you can see them for much longer than the 30 miles out, then, you know, light is going to travel a lot further than just that 30 miles. So an interesting question I think you need to answer. 
I know it's very laudable that you're asking questions, but there's really no point asking a question if you don't let anybody just respond to them. I mean, that's all most people want to do is just give you a fair answer. Whether you agree or not, it's up to you. But just please unblock and let people just answer you. And on blocking your channel, Harry, there was just one other thing I wanted to say. that When you block people, people come along to watch and if they realise you can't respond, they just don't bother coming back. So you might even notice that there will be a drop off in your view rate if you haven't seen one already, if you keep blocking too many people. I mean, I do the same when I go to um, Nick's channel. If I can't comment, really, what's the point in watching it? Because you might want to help and explain something. You can't make a comment. I mean, if you can't play this game by blocking people, it's just not how it works. Playing fair means allowing everybody to comment. Everybody is not being a total jerk. And jerk is not having a different ideology. Jerk is being a pain in the butt. But everyone who's playing fair, just allow them to comment. Even if you disagree, you'll probably find you get a much better cross-section of information that way, Harry.